So we'll start our today's session by paying our obeisances to His Divine Grace Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. We are in our journey on fourth chapter, which title is Transcendental Knowledge. Now, this was the last week's shloka, which was given, I think, we received the uh, recording from almost all of you. And thank you um, for sending that across. Is there anyone who hasn't sent the recording and would like to recite? Uh, yeah, I, I think everybody on. Jyoti ji, would you like to? Hello, yeah, uh, I, I need to read this. Yes, if you want to recite the shloka yeah, yeah, yeah. last week, yeah. yeah. जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्य मेव यो वेति तत्वता त्यक्तवा देह पुनर्जन्म नैति मामेति सोय जुड सोय विचुना थैंक यू सो फॉर टू कंटिन्यू विद द फोर्थ चैप्टर टुडे वी हैव फोर्थ चैप्टर हैविंग 42 वर्सेस and for our convenience we have divided this into six subsections we have covered the first three sections um, and a part of fourth section so today we will be covering fourth and fifth and next week will be uh, krishna willing will be wrapping up the last section of fourth chapter so we'll be wrapping up fourth chapter um so this is uh, like the title of the chapter itself is transcendental knowledge right so uh, the chapter starts where just giving a brief from in the last section so it starts with you know uh, krishna giving uh, the disciplic succession right so he gave us how this was this knowledge was given by him to the sun god vibhuswan and then to manu and then to ishwaku and how in due course this was lost and he also you know in the second section explains on uh, his appearance right why does he appear um, the primary reason can somebody tell me what is the primary reason for krishna's appearance to give happiness to his uh, devotees pure devotees That's right for his devotees right so he comes into you know reclaim the uh, fallen souls and you know uh, for yeah for uh, for his devotees and then comes the second reason that you know for you know um, annihilating the demons you know who are again in turn why because they are troubling his devotees right and then we learned the uh, shloka we recited today that uh, the one who understands krishna's activities and birth you know uh, it is all transcendental and then krishna how he explains that you know his whole he his whole body is transcendental it's not material like us right he he can remember he's omniscient he can remember past present and you know he knows the future right uh, whereas we are limited and uh, you know his body never deteriorates right then we learned how you know he has to cater different needs of people you know across um, he has given different paths right either some you know demigod worship or you know brahman worship parmatma worship he has given different paths but at the end the culmination of all paths is krishna himself yeah and and today and also last time we concluded by just understanding what is you know uh, this thing understanding the karma on platform of jnana which is the fourth section wherein we just quickly went through so there are three types right um, of karma uh, can somebody tell me what are those three uh, types karma vikarma and uh, uh... akarma right and akarma is akarma yeah <clears throat> thank you hari krishna ji so today we'll be just giving a bit more right we will covering that section so just quickly a bit to recap last section so that we can correlate that with what is going to happen today in the remaining section right so um 
so this was the shloka we concluded last time wherein krishna says you know he 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 acknowledges that it's very difficult to understand the intricacies of karma right very difficult to understand uh, therefore one person you know a, a person should know what is action what is forbidden action and what is inaction right so now we will again touch base a bit on you know on these three because um it is very important to understand what each of these are right very clearly so the following to the 18th shloka krishna highlights that one who sees inaction in action and action in inaction is intelligent among men and he is in the transcendental position right although engaged in all sort of activities now that's why it's very important right this is like a tongue twister well, you know in a way that it's it's little bit difficult to uh, understand what is krishna trying to say in action in action and action in an action right so it is confusing but to understand this to comprehend this it is very important for us to clearly understand what each of these terms are yeah and what krishna is saying is a person who is very clear in their understanding of what action is in action is and the forbidden action all the three yeah he he stated as intelligent by krishna krishna is calling this person as intelligent right now just to correlate this okay so what is can somebody say what is this picture about and what is arjuna doing here um about uh, of all the three kind what do you think arjuna's arjuna is here action forbidden action in action in action in action right and why why do we say in action working for krishna in krishna consciousness for krishna sorry hari krishna ji i couldn't hear you he is uh... working for krishna in krishna mm-hmm. consciousness yes yeah thank you so why because he's following krishna's instructions right he is he's doing what krishna's will is he's going as per krishna right so he's doing it for krishna that's why arjuna's action here to fight is in action yeah now initially when we started gita right the beginning part arjuna wanted to he didn't want to fight so what did he want to do he want to do vikarma <laughs> exactly so uh, that was my question so what action is that so he wanted to renounce and go to the forest right which was not for krishna's will not as per krishna's instructions so that action would be a forbidden action right so that will be a vikarma thank you hari krishna ji so again here what is arjuna doing it is in action right and if you wouldn't have um, you know fought and gone to the forest that would be a forbidden action right so we we need to understand sometimes you know that Uh, people say that whole gita is propagating you know fight uh, you know but we need and and it was and some t- people when they try to renounce and they go and they go to the forest it seemingly we think that oh they are it's it's such a good externally we feel that it's very sensible you know why fighting and all and you know but but we need to like we say you know the action itself we cannot determine right whether it is good or bad it's the consciousness behind it it's the intention the background behind it right so that's why you know arjuna running away would be a forbidden action right so because it will it is not right as a kshatriya it's his duty and it was not as per krishna's will as well right so so just moving further now we went through these slides i have put them again so that when you just walk through sometimes only this slide deck particular it should make sense on the flow yeah so this is yeah bad action which is um, forbidden action which is vikarma now feeding food to the poor 
yes it is right again it is a good action so it is punya right and then we also saw certain examples on akarma which is action in you know uh, krishna consciousness action right so now here um, we need we went through the example of hanuman ji right how he burnt whole of lanka he was like all valorous he could you know act he could fly you know uh, all the way there and he was he just you know he was asked to do right and he just followed krishna's instructions whereas you know uh, when we are following krishna's instructions we have to also remember that sometimes we have to also um, you know um, when we are talking about following it is following when it is as per our thought or it is as per not our thought as well so same hanuman ji can somebody tell me what role was he given during the kurukshetra war in dwapar yuga to be on the flag of arjuna's chariot right right so he was on he was in uh, in the flag of arjuna's chariot right so he was just given that role right with his valor you know when arjuna was you know confused he would have just thought just give me you know one he, he would have just given a blow and the whole kurukshetra war you know it it didn't happen as well right but the main thing to understand here is you know no matter what role hanuman ji is a pure devotee you know he always does anything which is asked by krishna you know he just follows the instructions of krishna there is no retaliation no proudness nothing you know just that ultimate surrender which is the key lesson for us right no matter what it is yeah so now when we are talking about such examples let's also uh, you know correlate you know what is what are these three uh, when it comes to food maybe which is our favorite most of our favorite right so this is a vegetarian food right and non vegetarian food now what we prefer it depends on what on our desire yes yes so it depends on our attachment towards that right now having vegetarian food is karma is action why because it is following the scriptures right it is following our vedas right when it comes to non veg it is vikarma right forbidden action why because it is against the scriptural injunctions right now if we are saying karma vikarma what do you think will be for a karma then when it comes to food prasad exactly very nice thank you so prasadam right so why because here in veg or non veg we are having the attachment which is self for self right but here krishna is in the center right so it is action in krishna consciousness right and it is a karma right and why because we are doing it for not our sense pleasure we are doing it for pleasure of krishna right nothing to do with self here right everything is you know doing for krishna right so um now we if we you know go for karma or vikarma or for that right it will be like if you do karma you may get heavenly planets right if you do vikarma you get hellish planets but either karma or vikarma we also learned last time that both have reactions right so we will either go up or we'll go down or we'll keep moving up and down you know so there is no release from this the, the bondage is still there because that attachment is still there whereas for akarma right this is anything done with krishna in center right for krishna for krishna's pleasure and this does not have any reactions right so to get away from the cycle of up and down up, you know going up and down or this birth and death cycle you know what we need to avoid the cycle prashadam right which is not for 
nothing to do with satisfying our senses it's krishna no sense self sense gratification right it's krishna krishna's gratification and only this is going to help us to transcend beyond the cycle right now when we are taking the example of food let's take a you know kind of living example which we have also you know as many examples as possible so that we in the end understand that 18th shloka when krishna says the person who sees action in inaction and inaction in action is intelligent and we are all intelligent right we want to be so let's yeah so um, now taking the example of prabhupad right so prabhupad's you know like you can see in the pic you know he used to write letters to his devotees you know respond to them and then he used to make prasad himself you know on his own for his devotees he used to preach you know he used to also record he used to write he used to distribute he did everything all his actions you know were in krishna consciousness right so that's why it does not have any reaction okay so everything he left to krishna that was the thing right he's not he was not even attached to his personal maintenance right he was um, because he was he had that full faith right beyond that also right he was never um, anxious for self you know if something went up and down he had heart attacks when he was traveling in his cargo ship at that age right but you know anything he did, took was krishna's blessing right he just did his duty and everything for krishna you know such an attached person un, sorry unattached person you know is always free from the resultant reactions whether it is good or bad yeah it is as though you know uh, we are not doing anything because there are no reactions anything we are doing is everything for krishna and that will not have any fruitive reaction it is beyond that right because it becomes transcendental anything done for krishna becomes transcendental which is beyond this right so the other example here is sorry yeah this is in action right yeah now the other one is vishwamitra right now we saw that he set out to the forest and you know for liberation and you know um, then he got distracted after years of penances he got distracted by you know uh, main khan rambha i think yeah so it is very and then he had a fall down right so why because he took he that step you know thinking that it is in in action right but it was without purification of heart and that's why when our heart is not fully pur purified and we take such a step then our senses are still attached right they they are still attached to the sense objects it's very easy to get again attracted and again to fall down because we still have that bondage it's not purified fully right hence it is always you know there will always be a risk of falling down you know that's why the primary the, or the prerequisite for us we learned why do we perform our prescribed duties for purification of heart right without that that is the first stage yeah only by doing our you know spiritual and occupational duties you know it will purify our heart and only that can right so now uh, this is a yeah so one with impure heart not performing actions obtains bondage of karma and subsequent misery yeah so this is again we are taking action in inaction so he is taking an action thinking it is in krishna consciousness right but without the prerequisites being fulfilled okay so now when we are doing inaction in action is prabhupada's example yeah we are performing krishna consciousness actions not per, you know not thinking that let me perform this action and it is in krishna consciousness no you know so our thought process has to be in action in action okay so we are performing in action in our actions you know krishna consciousness in our actions okay now this section 19th to 24th you know this covers the fourth subcategory of section 
and here it is <clears throat> we'll see how this knowledge it burns up our actions gnana burns up actions which is karma right we'll see it a bit further as we go to the slides we will grasp it more yeah so 4.19 shloka krishna highlights here that one is understood to be in full knowledge whose every endeavor is devoid of desire for sense gratification okay he said by sages to be a worker for whom the reactions of work have been burnt up by the fire of perfect knowledge so now we have discussed several times what is it which is full knowledge what do we call full knowledge does anybody remember when do we say a person is in knowledge who is working in krishna consciousness yeah but what what does the krishna conscious person know when he is not attached to the material world and he is working in krishna consciousness right and uh, so when we say that a person is working in krishna consciousness um, it is like a jeevira sarupa moy krishnere nitya das exactly exactly yeah so person in full knowledge is a person who knows self position krishna's position and our relationship with krishna which is our constitutional position right and this constitutional position what is our constitutional position jeevera swarupa hoy krishner nityadas right we are the eternal survivors of krishna right and this knowledge you know this perfect knowledge you know is you know will development of this knowledge of eternal survivorship to the lord is compared to fire here in this shloka why because such a fire once kindled can burn up all the reactions of work that fire of knowledge will burn all the reactions it will start slowly burning all of the reactions and at a stage when we reach where there are no reactions the stage where we spoke about prabhupad in action in action right so this freedom from the bondage or the bondage of actions reactions reactions right it can only happen when somebody is in krishna consciousness okay when someone is doing everything for krishna right the consciousness has to be always in krishna Ex we learned it many times that externally a krishna conscious person and a krishna non conscious person you know looks the same they might be looking doing the same activity but it's the conscious behind it right a krishna conscious person acts out of pure love for krishna you know and therefore when uh, the love is pure there is no attraction for anything else you know there is no attraction for fruits of our result because we live we live everything for krishna right and we do everything for krishna right now just one more further so this full knowledge you know now there are further two shlokas where we see you know a kind of stage of practice which is sadhana and the stage of perfection you know of that you know characteristics kind of thing so the 20th shloka says abandoning all attachment to the results of his activities ever satisfied and independent he performs no fruitive action although engaged in all kind of undertaking okay so he krishna is explaining what are the characteristics of that person right so this he is free from all attachment we took the example of prabhupad let's take the same example so that we can correlate it well you know and register well so prabhupad was you know ever satisfied right um in whatever you know krishna gave him like we to told the example of heart attack right whatever krishna gave him he took it as a blessing you know there was no thought process that oh why is krishna doing this to me i'm going to you know america to spread his message only why is this happening to me no you know so he took everything as his krishna's blessing yeah he gave his 100% right fully that faith and flinching faith right then the other character here is attachment right uh, sorry independent independent of what of any material desires which can which are rooted to our self for our sense gratification you know everything he did was for krishna's gratification for krishna's pleasure that was the center point you know 
to and no attachment to abandoning all attachment attachment to what to results right no expectation i'm doing this so i should get this you know it will be nice i get this it will be very nice if no categories you know so no attachment for results yeah even though prabhupad performed all the activities you know all kind of undertakings it right so it's like um, this freedom from the bondage of action is possible yes only in krishna consciousness when one is doing everything for krishna yeah he does his duty to the best of his ability and leaves everything to krishna such an unattached person is always free from the resultant reactions of good and bad it is as though he were not doing anything this is the sign of a karma or a action without fruitive reactions you know we should have that unflinching faith right do your best and leave the rest to krishna that's what we say yeah so it's like a child right um, child at home doesn't worry you know that um, will be i served food tomorrow by my parents no you know it's a it's a it's a faith that they will have right they don't need to worry about it they just do that stuff and then leave it to you know parents so like we said again and again krishna is our you know uh, universal father right so he is the father of all of us so we have to just do our best and leave rest on krishna's hand he will take care of it right so not that we don't you know we either we do and we expect results you know and that to results in some particular way and nor that we don't do any action only you know we should not go to both the extremes right so <clears throat> do your actions and leave it to krishna that's the you know base and and then further is the stage of perfection it is called as yagna yacharata karma yeah so um, maybe i'll give it to hari krishna ji will you be able to read this शारीरम such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence perfectly controlled gives up all sense of uh, proprietorship over his possessions and acts only for the bare necessities of life thus working he is not affected by sinful reactions thank you thank you lord so nirashir nirashir yata chittatma ya tyakta tyakta sarva parigraha shariram kevalam karma what is this shariram kevalam karma working only like to keep our body uh, you know to in such that in order to perform krishna conscious activities right it's like keeping our body and soul together right kurvan napnoti kilbisham right so krishna is clearly saying here work you know for the bare necessities of life not for luxury we need to have a clear definition in our own self you know that what is the bare necessity of life versus what is luxury right Uh, and each of one might be having our own definition right what is bare minimum needed for me versus what is you know the thing is because our desires are endless you know uh, is there any time point of our life where we think that i don't have any desire ever right they are endless and will never be contented never you know once we get it then we are ready for the next one you know or if we don't get it then we get frustrated right so we learned that right in second chapter 2.61 and 62 right so so we will never be contented due, due to what due to our attachment right and then we have you know that tends to our attachment as it increases it tends to we start really having say unrealistic and demanding expectations you know 
it might be just not with us with the whole family right we uh, we uh, we would expect that my child you know this person my child could be this could be that you know uh, you know so it is like endless you know we always think um the other thing which krishna is explaining here is giving up all sense of proprietorship also right that ownership because we all think that oh if something happens to me you know the family won't be able to survive or you know how will this thing happen without me how will that so we we tend to think things will not move and we have seen in our life you know hopefully most of us that you know we think that without this nothing can move but when we see that that person is not there eventually things move you know they they take their shape the world moves you know the show goes on that's what we say right it it goes on you know there will be little bit hiccups but it will go on right but and so we want to always think that that kind of proprietorship that kind of ownership we feel it nice you know giving imp- self importance again self is coming here right but actually if we really sit down and think and analyze nothing is in our hands nothing when a situation happens not much is in our hands you know we feel so helpless you know i wish that would have happened this so it's better to engage our mind and intelligence in krishna's service right and have you know a uh, thought process to you know to work the amount uh, which is satisfying to keep our to fulfill our family needs you know the amount that can enable us to fulfill our family needs and at the same time to have you know our devotional service you know in in continuation not having luxury targets you know then there will be a compromise right if you have if you expect a lot back then you will you will undergo that chain you know of expectation and then results and then you know eventually that cycle will take place so here krishna is clearly saying that a man you know mind and intelligence should be perfectly controlled why to act only as per the bare necessities of life if we are controlling our mind then we will never be attracted to luxury luxury it will be we have a clear defin- defined mindset that this is yeah this is satisfying you know then then comes the level of satisfaction at some time point otherwise there is always not no satisfaction and the hankering is always there and then we see all the cycle how you know our mind keeps contemplating and we eventually tend to get angry we eventually fall down right so so giving up all the sense of proprietorship you know i me myself giving that up yeah so further we are just yeah just a quote here um which might be really good to understand so we know this is uh, dhritarashtra right who is sitting and sanjaya is speaking to dhritarashtra that you know sanjaya is explaining uh, dhritarashtra there were so many people who explained dhritarashtra right stop this gambling you know stop your uh, you know make your son understand you know don't support him in his ill activities yeah to duryodhana but dhritarashtra always said you know i can't do really much you know uh, he always used to put it on destiny you know maybe destiny needs this so sanjaya you know comes across this very you know a strong statement that destiny determines the consequences of our action not our action itself right so for example if we are destined to have um, you know it's our uh, destiny has given our children we gave this example before it has given our children such good atmosphere right they have all the necessities of life good parents right and they have the atmosphere to get that spiritual journey as well right but now it's on them how they shape their life and perform their actions right so our you know actions it's not just destiny it's our actions which determines the consequences of our destiny that is important to understand our destiny may be that we will have a lot of bank balance you know with us but if it's on us how we use that bank balance it's on our actions which how we use those bank, bank balance right so our actions play the key role which will determine the eventual you know destiny 
right so our actions has to be that's why in krishna consciousness right because it will it will help us yeah now just further um, yeah it's like 22nd shloka um so maybe jyoti ji will you be able to read it sure it's like uh, bg 4.22 he who is satisfied with gain which comes of its own accord who is free from duality and does not envy who is steady in both success and failure is never entangled all the performing action hari krishna thank you Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, I was just saying that. Yeah. So um, here from the picture, uh, what we are seeing is the story of Jada Bharata. Does anyone here know the story of Bharat Maharaj? Just a little, you know, like she was affectionated towards a little uh, deer, and then uh, next to birth he took uh, take birth of deer, and then he gets this uh, human body. In this time, he will not attach to anything, and uh, he goes back to God. Right, right. So uh, thank you, <laughs> uh, thank you, Ramaji. So yes, so um, Bharat Maharaj's story is like he was a very great king. and um he was so he was um he renounced his kingdom and he went to the forest and he was doing his krishna conscious activities but eventually he he got attracted to a, attached to a deer and he started taking care of the deer so much that he he forgot to do his you know krishna conscious activities he was really getting attached you know he really got attached in fact and at his death time he passed away thinking of the deer you know what will happen to the deer i'm going you know that that attachment and in next life he took birth as a deer we will see in eighth chapter that um, how our consciousness when during the time of death plays the role you know because it defines our next life as well you know krishna clearly says you know whatever we think and based on our actions what we have performed in this life it will determine our body what body we will take in the next life okay so he eventually took birth in his next life as a deer but krishna blessed him because he had done um you know uh, bhakti in his prior life krishna had given him the power that he could remember everything from his past life and he could remember how he got attached to the deer and all so what he did as a deer was he went to the ashram of um, sages and he he did austerity you know where he he just had dry grass and you know all of that so during his death time then you know he eventually in the next birth he took birth as jada bharat you know and jada bharat was born in a brahman family you know he was but he was so self realized you know from the start uh, he went set off to the forest uh, people were thinking he's a fool you know but he set off to the forest and um, once what happened was the king's palanquin was going on it was passing by and uh, they needed you know uh, support to carry the palanquin so uh, he, the king's soldiers asked uh, jada bharata's help and uh, he he helped you know he took the palanquin on his shoulders and he was trying to help but while you know he was taking it he was moving too much left and right he was getting very wavery and um, the king was feeling uncomfortable because the palanquin was moving a lot uh, so the king got down and he, you know he started checking with him that you know why are you being so unstable and then uh, jada bharat like explains that well there are ants you know on the ground so they are also living entity you know i cannot stamp them so i have to save them so that, then the king realized you know such a self realized soul he is 
you know he's he he was just um, jada bharat was satisfied in what he had and um, he did not envy anybody and we'll see in um, next chapter fifth chapter i think it's 18th verse where uh, uh, it talks you know um, uh, panditah samadarshina you know 18th shloka so a self realized lord sees no difference you know they see super soul in everybody every living entity right so he didn't so this characteristics you know he was always satisfied nothing mattered to him you know he did not have any envy towards devotees you know he was free from that duality of happiness sad you know that one. so and he was not you know when we could see when the king also bowed down to him realizing he's such a self realized soul he did not get really high up oh wow look at the king you know so he did not have that duality in him yeah that like we we eventually see in this material world someone is getting promoted they are up in the sky high you know so um it's it's yeah it's it's so opposite to what a self realized soul would be right so when we perform krishna conscious activities nicely we will see in ourselves how gradually we start you know getting a level of satisfaction more and a level of hankering reduced you know in in that so it will help us not to get entangled and how our approach becomes a bit more steady when it comes to you know when we see ups and downs in life you know that that mindset you know it, it works on the roots like on our consciousness um so i do realize the time so it's um yeah so it is 24th shloka uh, kavya ji will you be able to read it समाधिन कृष्णस is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of same spiritual nature hari krishna thank you so it's a guarantee from krishna right this shloka he is saying the person who is fully observed absorbed and krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom yeah because of what because of his full contribution to spiritual activities here the, again and again we are taking brahma right brahma here is spiritual you know many times it is used in this yeah it means spiritual right? and and which is offered in the same spiritual nature yeah the more activities we perform in this material world um you know the more spiritual activities yeah we perform in this material world um you know our atmosphere becomes more spiritualized because we get more completely absorbed right so now further i'm just going to move a bit so that we can have some end time for questions um so we are now coming to the fifth section um which is attaining jnana through through yagna yeah now i am going to you know just recap a bit because third chapter we extensively spoke about what is yagna you know what are sacrifice why we need to do them so this is just a brief you know to give so that we can correlate with this section yeah and that shows that bhagavad gita it's all linked interlinked you know the chapters are interlinked yeah so we cannot just take one verse from one place and come up with a conclusion or a interpretation right so so you, what is yagna so it is offering prescribed duties to lord vishnu or krishna with without personal desire is called yagna yeah vedas enjoin yagno vai vishnu ho in other words the same purpose is served whether one performs prescribed yagnas or directly serves lord vishnu yeah the name is the same yeah as the if one should perform actions for the purpose of yagna what type of yagna is this yeah 
Krishna will explain it now. Yeah. So, what is yajna? Performing our prescribed duties. Yeah. Now, prescribed duties. We also studied that we have two kind of duties, right? Spiritual duty and material duty. You know. So, performing our duties, you know, leads to what? Purification of heart. And that will awaken the knowledge so that we can start understanding Krishna. Yeah, a person, um, Krishna mentioned a person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom, right? Because of his full contribution to spiritual activities, right? So, um, so we have gone through this slide deck um, and this is one of the shlokas we recited as well. Does anyone would like to recite this? Right. Thank you, Hare Krishna Ji. Work done as sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work causes bondage in this material world. Therefore, O son of Kunti, perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction and in that way you will always remain free from bondage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think there is a lag. That's why I couldn't. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so this is this was one of the important shlokas of third chapter, right? The first one we recited, actually. Um, it is yagnyarthart karma no nyata, lokoyam karma bandhanaha, tadartam karma konteya, mukta sangha samachar, right? This was the first time when Krishna had when this word yajna was mentioned in Gita, right? And first time when Krishna was saying, you know, do it for me, you know, uh, which is for me, yeah. And we saw how Vedas say yajna hi Vishnu, right? It is Vishnu. What is yajna? We also learned that like a yoga, where, you know, the just like yoga has a form and a principle. What is the form of yoga? like sitting in different postures, right? Asana, right? And the principle is, what is the principle of performing yoga? To connect with the super soul, right? Similarly, yajna also has a form and a principle, right? So the form is, you know, offering ahuti, right? Into the fire. And the principle is sacrifice, right? We are performing sacrifice, right? Now, um, now yeah, Krishna, uh, what we enjoy, it's like whatever we enjoy, what Krishna is saying is do your prescribed duties, you know, perform sacrifice. Whatever we enjoy, we are giving Krishna to Krishna as a sacrifice. So further to this, um, we also learned in the same, we are going to summarize a bit of third chapter here in a way that um, we also saw that we have to remember that from, you know, when we are talking about sacrifice, it's just not fire sacrifice right, which was performed back, you know, uh, now we also discuss that we don't even have the pure ghee, you know, no ingredients are also pure, you know, so uh, before they used to perform sacrifices, you know, and through mantras, you know, they could, you know, you know, have new uh, life come out of the fire also, you know, so, but, but we are not having such strong um, contents now, ingredients, now, right? So sacrifice does not just refer to fire sacrifice. Yeah, um, we we will today go through you know different kind of sacrifices as well, uh, but we have to remember, right? Um, the sacrifice which is prescribed for Kali Yuga is 
chanting the holy name yeah? yeah hare krishna hare krishna krishna krishna, krishna. hare 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 rama rama hare rama 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 hare hare right so uh, in 10th shloka 9th was yagnartha shloka in 10th shloka krishna says clearly that how in the beginning of creation the lord of all creatures sent for generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for vishnu and blessed them by saying be thou happy by this yagna because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation right so what is the purpose of us for of krishna creating this material world the purpose was it is a chance for us for living entities you know to perform the sacrifice and go back to krishna you know go back to godhead that is the purpose and this is the thing we should never forget you know we are here the main purpose is this the rest are secondary purpose the primary purpose is to perform the sacrifice it's a chance for us you know and especially the human form we learned so many times that it is out of 84 lakh species that we are getting this right so it is really precious right so so um and then you know why um so the vedic principles why they are here because for us to understand our relationship with krishna right and we saw how krishna mentions you know um that vedesh ch sarve raham eva vedyo so that is 15th chapter he mentions that the the you know the the um, purpose of vedas is what the ultimate purpose is to know krishna right so so we should remember the purpose again i'm saying you know we try to tend to make other things material things as primary purpose and then secondary everything but you know it's clearly mentioned the primary purpose is krishna and what is the sacrifice for kali yuga he also mentions you know of all the sacrifices in in 10th chapter he mentions that of all the sacrifices chanting of the holy name you know is the main. yeah and we also learned you know how um how the cycle of sacrifice right where um you know they we perform sacrifices to demigods demigods become happy for example they provide rain from the rain you know the uh, the grains grow and eventually when we offer you know we have to offer those grains back to krishna right to satisfy krishna so the cycle of sacrifice we learned this also right so krishna also mentioned in the 11th shloka of third chapter that thus you know when you perform the sacrifice the demigods you know who are assigned for those departments they are pleased by the sacrifice and they will please you right and thus by the cooperation between the men and the demigods prosperity will be there right and then we learn that the person who um you know who doesn't do the sacrifice and you know keeps taking you know the um provisions given to us he that person was called as a thief right so um trupti ji will you be able to read this yes in charge of the various necessities of men the demigods being satisfied by the performance of uh, yagna sacrifice will supply all necessities to you but he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigod in return is certainly a thief thank you hari krishna thank you so we learned this right enjoying everything and not offering it back krishna is calling this person as thief it's really strong right so we should be performing sacrifice right these demigods we have to remember that these are nothing but authorized supplying agents right on behalf of krishna right on behalf of vishnu so okay and then we correlated this with an example that say we are building a house we have a plumber working on it carpenter different people right uh, construct uh, constructor and you know um, they are different people are working on it and eventually the person says you know that because i am putting so much of effort but who are give, who is giving the material for them to do this it's the owner of the house right and eventually when the house is built if the person if these plumber and other workers they say that no i have put in my effort so this belongs to me without giving it back to the owner does that make sense 
when we are correlating this with this example it doesn't make sense at all but eventually you know we have to understand that we are doing the same if we are not giving performing sacrifice right we have to perform sacrifice that is the way we are giving it back to krishna right so um so yeah so we have to remember krishna is the boss you know we would like to be called as boss and that kind of mentality we have to remove from us right we are servants we have to remember that right so he has given us everything you know this as basic as you know our brain sunlight water made no be what you know there is nothing in this which our scientists or we can produce on our own right so we have to understand that you know when we are getting electricity in our house we pay the bills right when we get you know supplies in our house we get pay the bills so krishna is giving us all this and the way to pay the bill back to him is by performing these sacrifices right so similarly yeah fifth chapter we will learn this verse bhukta ram yagna tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram surudham sarva bhutanam gyatvamam shantim rachati a person in full consciousness of me knowing me the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerity yeah remember ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and also the supreme lord of all planets and demigod the benefactor the well wisher of living entities attains peace you know from this material mysteries yeah so again um krishna highlights in third chapter that my dear arjuna one who does not follow in human life this cycle of sacrifice thus established by the vedas certainly leads to life full of sin it's sinful yeah living only for the satisfaction of senses such a person lives in vain it's of no use you know so there will be cats and hogs again next life right based on what they are doing now why this is because for us to remember what we learned in third chapter that sacrifice you know krishna had also highlighted you know the importance there yeah and we also learned in yoga ladder right the how vedas they cater to different level of people right it's so that it's gradual elevation for them yeah why it is catering so that gradually when they start doing at least that level it will start purifying them when they perform those duties it will pu- start purifying them gradually and then they can climb up right then they can eventually lead to krishna right so like krishna had given different ways right with different paths in yoga ladder he has given in fourth chapter different sacrifices also but we have to remember just like krishna gave different paths you know in the end in second chapter also we learn and in sixth chapter also which primarily talks about ashtang yoga you know he krishna talks whole thing about ashtang yoga in detail and in the end he concludes with what that bhakti yoga is supreme it's the highest you know so this is the shloka you know yoginam api sarvesham madvate nantaratmana shraddhavan bhajate yo mam same yukta tamo matah and of all yogis the one with great faith who always abides in me thinks of me within himself and renders transcendental loving service to me he is the most intimate intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all that is my opinion yeah so he explains everything in the end he says according to me the highest is bhakti okay so similarly he is catering now different type of sacrifices this is from shloka 24 to 33 25 to 33 yeah of fourth chapter you know this was to give a background that just like krishna gave different paths even before in the end he concludes then you know that the best of all is this similarly we will see a different kind of sacrifices here and krishna in the end in the 33rd work concludes that a person will see that what he concludes okay so different types of sacrifices so i'll not go very much in detail with this looking at the time but uh, it's it's pretty yeah so 25th shloka talks about demigod worship right so karma yogis right they worship demigod by different sacrifices right so brahman worship so we learned the three aspects of absolute truth brahman parmatma and absolute um, bhagwan 
and brahman worship is the gnani yogis we learned that also in the yoga ladder right they offer the sacrifices right it is for them then mind control brahmacharis right um so brahmacharis um yeah offer senses in the fire yeah they have the mind control you know they controlling over the mind is the key for them that's the kind of sacrifice for them right and then sense enjoyment grahasthas like we all are right um it is sense objects right so um maybe we can talk a bit more on this because most of us are falling in this uh, part so grahastha we call it as a ashram right what is ashram ashram is somewhere where we are keeping krishna in center so grahastha is actually an ashram it's not like if you are a grahastha you can do anything and everything you know you have to remember that it's an institution it's an ashram in itself right so our we have the responsibility that we have to focus our senses you know on krishna and it should be used in krishna service and you know together as a family right because they are we are in family that doesn't mean that we can do anything right the, and and in you know in um in seventh shloka krishna himself mentions that um, you know he is the sex life which is not contrary to religious principles not contrary to religious principles yeah so grahasthas have to abide per the religious principles that's what krishna is saying you know getting children right yeah so that they can why why to beget children the consciousness should be to be able to give them krishna consciousness that is our duty as parents to make sure our children get krishna consciousness right so so yeah basically then uh, further um, patanjali yoga system is given here right we know that they control um, you know uh, perform the yoga and they control the senses and life then charity charity yes so <laughs> some people um, you know they are not interested to understand spirituality right we see you know quite a lot of i think uh, business you know mindset um, that they are not interested to do much of spirituality nor understanding so what they do is they give their material possessions as charity right at least you know as a sacrifice so that is a kind of sacrifice krishna is you know seeing saying here as well charity is also a kind of sacrifice right it's it's better to do illegal activities than for such people to give charity in you know krishna consciousness so that they can get purified also right then comes austerity right so now this was done back in we know satyuga right mainly and uh, uh, it's not that we as devotees you know now uh, yes they used to perform severe austerities then but we have to remember as devotees we also you know perform austerities right what is austerity um, prabhupada had um, defined austerity very nicely that uh, it is voluntary inconvenience for krishna us taking undertaking voluntary inconvenience for krishna krishna's pleasure right we also undergo austerity right we perform ekadashi it is an austerity right we get up early in the morning for chanting it's not so easy right uh, so that is also a kind of austerity right so um, yes but there are people we took the example last time like dhruv maharaj right he also performed austerity but why to have material possessions right um, so austerities can also be you know uh, a part of sacrifice then mysticism yeah uh, this is the eight fold mysticism is nothing but ashtang yoga ashtang yoga has the eight steps right yam niva niyam asan pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyana and um, samadhi right so the, and it starts um, nowadays uh, we see that ashtang yoga there are a lot of centers which perform right ashtang yoga uh, and we see that it's more focuses on uh, physical you know uh, wellness right uh, but we'll see in sixth chapter that an ashtang yogi first has to there are steps you know turn by turn you will go not straight to a place you know there are some what are yam and niyam these are the first two yam and niyam are don'ts and do's first we have to uh, a person who is serious in krishna consciousness you know looking for liberation first have to undergo the steps of following you know not to do 
like the we need to follow the regulative principles right not to no meat eating no intoxication no gambling and no illicit relationship so these are the don'ts right and the do's are our sadhana right so we have to first do do's and don'ts not directly go into performing some asanas which is happening nowadays right so we have to if we want if we are serious then we have to follow the process then uh, it comes 28th shloka talks about uh, the last bit scriptural study so uh, it is nothing but it is called as swadhyaya gyana yagna yeah or studying the vedas some people are really into studying that is also a kind of austerity trying to know krishna right then comes pranayam we know this this is really famous among all the yoga systems right controlling the yoga. so in the end in 30th shloka um yeah krishna says that overall you know performing sacrifices any kind of sacrifice you know there are different levels of course you know at the end we are trying to control our senses what is the aim of performing sacrifice to control our senses yeah yeah which is which we learned right is it is the key right without sacrifice the 31st shloka says one can never live happily in this life or the next krishna said the same in 3.10 right if you want to be happy in this material world and get liberated to the spiritual world you have to perform sacrifice sacrifice will give you both happiness and liberation right thus 32nd shloka thus many type of sacrifice are described in vedas so krishna is listing some of them yeah many kinds right so um sacrifice like in third chapter yagna culminates into gnana yeah it is the same chain where performing the sacrifice which is prescribed duties what happens purification of heart happens and after purification heart gets as heart gets purified that thick layer of rust which is sitting on us it starts diminishing and what starts coming the knowledge gnan it starts coming okay no now yeah this is the last shloka which after telling all the sacrifices krishna is saying here what is the highest of all right o chastiser of the enemy the sacrifice performed in knowledge is better than the mere sacrifice of material possessions after all o son of Prat pratha all sacrifices of work culminates in transcendental knowledge yeah everything right again krishna is highlighting like that 6.47 of all what is highest which is done in full knowledge and we learned what is our what is full knowledge right yeah we are the servants of krishna we have to serve yeah that is the highest so like before so and you know um, of course one thing here is all the sacrifice of work culminates into transcendental knowledge no matter which sacrifice you perform yes but the amount of it's like um, you know um, taking a lift versus the stairs what we learned before right and krishna says in uh, seventh chapter i think it's 19th verse uh, that bahunam janmanam ante gnanvan mam prapadyante vasudevam sarvamidhi sa mahatma su durlabha so the person who knows vasudev is everything you know he is the highest so that person it will take long many many lives for people who perform such sacrifices to attain that level that vasudev is everything yeah and such personality is durlabha means it's not easy you know it's very rare to get right so it's like take, taking a direct flight or an indirect flight right we took that example also last time now i have just picked up two three slides in the end from some uh, <clears throat> some quotes from purports of some shloka so maybe you know uh, we can just quickly go through um, those because it will make our understanding more solid you know uh, i think i missed that time rama prabha ji will you be able to read it actually sacrifice means to satisfy the supreme lord vishnu who is also known as yagna all the different varieties of sacrifice can be placed within two primary divisions namely sacrifice of worldly possession and sacrifice in pursuit of transcendental knowledge those who are in krishna consciousness sacrifice all material possession for the satisfaction of the supreme lord while others who want some temporary material happiness 
sacrifice their material possession to satisfy demigods such as indra the sun god etc and others who are impersonalists sacrifice their identity by merging into the existence of impersonal brahman right thank you right so in the end you know yagna you know vishnu is what uh, krishna is yagnapati he is called right so eventually any sacrifice you do it is for krishna's satisfaction and we learned the two kinds right one who is materially oriented and one who wants to gain the knowledge you know the approach and prabhupada is highlighting here the consciousness behind the sacrifice right you the two persons may be performing the sacrifice the consciousness behind it you know of whether it is for gaining the knowledge or for material gain you know it's different you know so um just moving further um jyoti ji will you be able to read this uh, sorry i am in the metro maybe is okay. connect my call but i try all these yoga are faithfully engaged in different types of sacrifice and that seeking purpose of life krishna consciousness the parents of the subconsciousness cannot be but can be attained only by the mercy of the lord and his bona fide devotees therefore krishna consciousness is transcendental hare krishna thank you so right uh, prabhupad is again highlighting here that through all the sacrifices you know um what is our ultimate goal it's to get krishna prem right um so um so even though we are in, engaged in direct service of the lord you know the main thing is we need to call krishna so much uh, de- desperately that you know he hears us right we should be seen by krishna right so he his mercy to request to bestow his mercy on him on us yeah without his mercy we will yeah will not get in there you know the main thing is getting krishna's mercy on us and that's what we you know when we chant what is it we are glorifying krishna right we are glorifying krishna so that you know his mercy bestows upon us right and the last slide um uh um, maybe i can i think i kavya ji Will you be able to read it? Ah uh, yes, Mata ji. From the foregoing explanation of different types of sacrifice, namely sacrifice of one's possessions, study of Vedas or philosophical doctrines, and performance of yoga system, it is found that the common aim of all is to control the senses. Sense gratification is the root cause of material desire. therefore unless and until one is situated on a platform apart from sense gratification there is no chance of being elevated to the eternal platform of full knowledge full bliss and full life this platform is in the eternal atmosphere or brahman atmosphere all the above mentioned sacrifices help one to become cleansed of the sinful reactions of the material existence by this advancement in life not only does one become happy and opulent in this life but also at the end he enters into eternal kingdom of god either merging into the impersonal brahman or associating with the supreme personality of godhead krishna thank you thank you so how sacrifice importance of sacrifice you know prabhupada is highlighting here that how sacrifice helps us to get through the fo- first and most important stage which is sense control right and that is needed that is the root cause because our thinking about always ourselves um i want this big house i want this you know this luxury you know it should be at least this much our criterias are all centered around self you know and we eventually set the standard for our future 
you know, for ourselves and for our family. So we need to have, you know, that kind of bare necessities of life. That's what Krishna mentioned, right? We have to, you know, otherwise, the more you widen your wings in that in material position, the more you will get involved in it, because the, the more you will get attached to it, right? So the first and the most important stage is sense control which is what the sacrifice would ultimately make us, you know, and in the end, it will help us to reach to Krishna, right? And what, um, what is the main sacrifice? Because we have been talking about sacrifice. What is the main sacrifice we learn uh, in Kali Yuga, which can take us quickly, the fastest is chanting the holy name. Yeah. So, Krate Yadhyayato Vishnum Tretayam Yajato Makehe Dvapare Paricharyayam Kalau Tadhari Kirtana. Right. This is the verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. Twelfth canto, third chapter, fifty-second verse. Yeah. Whatever results was obtained in Satya Yuga by meditating on Vishnu, in Treta Yuga by performing sacrifices, and in Dwapar Yuga by serving the lotus feet of the world. Yeah. Can be obtained in Kali Yuga simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And we have to always remember, right? The name is as powerful as Krishna. Yeah, and the Hare Krishna mantra. Um, yeah, so with that, um, we conclude our today's session.